Hi, welcome. It's Milan again with the Tuning Into The One video series. And we're going to pick up this time where we left off last time, which is talking about effective communication. What we mean to say, what we end up saying, and what gets heard. So what we intend to communicate, what we want to say, what we mean, and then what we end up communicating or saying and what gets heard are really three separate things or can be three separate things. So in this world of misunderstanding and possible misinterpretation, uh, how do we find clarity? How do we really get to an effective place of communication where what we want to say, what we end up saying, and what ends up getting heard are really pretty close to the vest when it comes to intention, design, delivery, as well as reception. And again, we also discussed last time biology, how we're different in terms of female and male. Uh, basically, men you know, are designed to be the hunters and women are designed to be more of the gatherers, at least from the standpoint of when we look at sociology and an anthropologically, the human species, the guy goes out and he kills uh, the, the animal and brings it home or a group of men go out and they're responsible for the hunt and then they bring back uh, what they're able to uh, hunt down and then the women are the gatherers and take care of the children and uh, the community uh, in the village or in whatever uh, uh, setting we want to take it to. Now, here we are a couple of thousand, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 years later in a post-modern industrial world and what does that have to do with the price of tea in China when it comes to our contemporary situation? Well, what we discussed before is that really men have left the cave, but the cave hasn't left the man. So how do we reconcile this when it comes to relating, dating, and mating, especially when we want to find, attract, and keep lasting love and find our dream, ideal, soulmate, partner, that perfect person for us? Well, obviously, communication is going to play a critical role. So biology, how we're designed to work at the DNA level as well as uh, uh, how we look different. You know, we live in a world that's fully equal in so many ways. If not physically, then certainly in terms of a level of equanimity. There's opportunity for all. We talk about how there's the opportunity to follow your purpose, your passion. The difference, the role models, the stereotypes, they've all shifted. We no longer live in a world where the man is the one who goes to work and the woman stays home and takes care of the kids and takes care of the household. That model is very outmoded. So is the traditional marriage. You don't find people that are married for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years like you used to. So the boundaries of who we are, what we do, and how we end up um, manifesting our worlds are very much intersected. You have men who stay at home as dads and you have women who are breadwinners for the family. So the androgyny and the cross referencing of the old stereotypes has us in a completely different world on top of which now we're in a digital high-tech you know a world of a virtual dating as well as all kinds of other things we still have the same amount of hours 168 hours a week but now we have a world that's full of complexity interdependence and on so many levels we are we are really dealing with each other as individuals and so some of the traditional um, stereotypes and some of the Traditional roles have gone by the wayside. So what we discussed last time had to do with the basics of having a voice, being heard, and being acknowledged. We also talk about the basics of biology and then the sociology. So the biology is the idea that the men or the male is the uh, hunter and the female or the woman is the gatherer. Well, guess what? That sociology is also gone by the wayside from a traditional standpoint. And we live in a much more androgynous, semantic world, meaning that the traditional words and meanings that we associate with things are gone. We have metro males. We have uh, women out there that are doing all kinds of things that men definitely used to do almost exclusively. And now nothing is really the realm of one sex or the other, with the obvious exception of procreation. And even that's testing a lot of boundaries technologically. So biology, hunter and gatherer, society or sociologically how we're raised, uh, language. Men use language to problem solve. Women use language to build relationships and uh, build uh, different levels of association where men basically don't do that. I recently saw a movie called Aloha 
explain it. Uh, Bradley Cooper and um, has an old girlfriend, uh, Rachel McAdams, and she's remarried. And she's the, they're both. It's a military uh, 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 family. She's married to a military guy, and Bradley Cooper's also in the military. And then Bradley Cooper shows up at their house, and the two men basically have an exchange. And she's watching it, and they don't. They hardly say a word. They they open up two beers. They look at each other. They kind of do some expressions non-verbally and then she's like what happened there like you guys didn't even say anything he didn't say anything he's like oh he said a whole lot so men the way we communicate traditionally as well as still in contemporary modern society hasn't changed that much the men have left the cave but the cave has not left the men so what do we do with this information from a biology we look at the biology and we decide what it is that we want that biology to represent in our own unique way. Second thing is society. We're raised differently. Um, if you're raised in a more traditional environment, part of this also has to do with ethnic differentiation or race or all kinds of different pieces, whether you're raised in the U.S., whether you're raised as a city mouse or a country mouse. All these things will build your values, your beliefs, your identities, and all these things come to the table when we try to communicate and meet have our worlds intersect so that we can have some kind of an intelligible discussion. And finally, there's the energy track. We live in a world that's very uh, beyond the boundaries of the physical senses, and a lot of people are getting very kind of new agey or spacey or metaphysical along with everything else. But to bring it right back down to some basics, it's energy. And then we just have the same kind of biological differences. We have energetic differences that have been around for centuries. And you know, millennia when it comes down to the yin and the yang. So these are important things to consider because when we communicate, we do it biologically, we do it sociologically, and we also do it energetically. So now that combined with the idea that we want to say something, we intend to say something, we end up communicating something that may not be the same thing that we intended, and then how it's received, the biology, the sociological aspect, and the energetic aspect all play a role in our ability to interpret it. So even if you're a, you're a really powerful and active listener, you might have selective hearing filters that are based on biology, that are based on how you were raised and so your, socio, your social filters along with your energetic filters of where you're coming from. Are you coming from your thoughts, which is more of a yang place and more of the associated with that powerful go out there and get stuff done. So yang energy is the hunter, the yin energy is the gatherer. The biology, the energy, and how we're socialized all act as filters so that how we want to communicate and what we want to say, what we end up communicating and saying, and what gets heard could be three different things. Now, the final piece that's very much universal for everyone in every society of every biological ilk and supersedes and goes above even energy has to do with the fact that we want to have a voice, we want to be heard, and we want to be acknowledged. So those are the nine pieces of the three by three clarity matrix, the communication clarity matrix, so that you get clear on all the different possible filters and then you start deciding on how to consciously communicate. Conscious communication is important because when we go to take action steps, we want to be able to consciously communicate effectively so that that develops our own ability to have a unique recipe for who we are, how we want to represent ourselves, and how to effectively bring that to the conscious communication. So, what all of that means is that you have to consider at least nine matrix factors when you're looking to define who you are and how you want to communicate and how you want to be received and perceived as well as what are the major pieces that blend together in the compatibility. So when you go out there, you know what you want with your blueprint. And then through the map, the, the uh, magnetic attraction of past and present, you have a very good idea of how things have worked out for you past and present and what you really want to work on your points of desire and your points of attraction so that you can bring that into your re reality in an accelerated magnetic attraction way. And finally, that conscious communication that allows you to design action steps for recipes and strategies that really help you to get there to effectively communicate at multiple levels to be able to explore compatibility, to develop connection as well as to explode chemistry at just the right time. And that is designed for you to be able to do it in such a way that you have to make a choice 
between conscious communication and whatever you're doing now. To do that, you have to remember that there have to be some simple scripts for you to be able to use and we're going to cover those in the next video. So get clear on how you prefer or you want to communicate knowing what you now know about the 3x3 three three clarity communication matrix, which is there's your biology. Your biology is physical DNA and who you are. Are you coming from more of a hunter perspective or are you more of a consensus builder and a gatherer? Are you looking at all the different pieces of how you were socialized, both in terms of being a man as far as problem solving with basic language skills, as well as the other side which has to do with looking at the nuances of building relationships. Classic example I gave before, a woman says, I'm thirsty. The man's first intuitive male reaction is to solve the problem. How does he do that? Let me get you a glass of water. A woman says, I'm thirsty, and another woman comes by and says, wow, I was thirsty this morning, and you know what I did? I actually went to the store, and they had this really neat kind of pH-balanced water that I thought was so cool, and she starts telling the story about this water, completely not addressing any issue about solving the problem, but building a connection, building rapport, building the relationship through storytelling, and connecting with what it's like to be thirsty, and how she experienced satisfying her thirst and then getting into the story. Classic example, if you're looking for a better source on that, Deborah Tannen, Women and Men in Conversation, you just don't understand. Fabulous work on the difference between how men and women communicate verbally. Then sociological examples or filters have to do with how we were raised, uh, traditional country mouse, city mouse, and then finally the energy track. Are you on that energy track of thoughts which has more of a yang a uh, feature to it or are you more in the yin and really getting into your feelings and emotions those are important filters and then knowing what it is you want to say how you want to say it how it's coming across and how it's being received and perceived and finally do you have a voice are you willing to give the other side a voice have you been heard are you willing to listen to the other side remember sometimes in order to listen you've got to talk less in order to listen more and then you've got active listening and selective hearing based on your filters of biology how you're socialized as well as your energy stream and finally how do you acknowledge that so next time we're going to cover some real straightforward basics including how to move towards the positive outcome you want and away from the negative outcome you don't want so this is Milan once again thanking you for being around and as always Look below here if you're looking for Mr. Wright and you want to find him right now. The Soulmate Attraction Blueprint Strategy Session is still free and it's still available. I only do a few weeks, so look at the link below. Learn more, get more information, book your session now because they will be going away in their present form very shortly. And subscribe, comment on this video. As always, we'd love to have you as part of our family here. So remember, until the next time, relationship success and dating mastery are just part of it as well as dating success and relationship mastery. It all starts with communication and understanding the three by three clarity communication model is essential for making it simple so you can be direct and know everything from how to say yes and no mindfully to being able to communicate effectively and not be able to set off minds or triggers or all kinds of stuff. So until the next time, this is Milan wishing you amazing dating success and relationship mastery. And as always, I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.